monstering drink? I don't know. Having my morning coffee. Energy jelly in a bag. Well, that was quite a walk. I'm already sweating. It's supposed to get really hot starting from today. High of 27 degrees today, maybe? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to survive some summer. And it's cloudy today, too. It just feels really humid. Bongo. You can't really see it behind the truck right now, but uh, it's a family-run business that's been in business for about like 60 years. They all make uh, onigiri and rice balls by hand. And they create a wide variety of onigiri, like about 56 kinds. 56? It's a lot. Well, we'll see how many there actually is when we get inside. Well, if you get overwhelmed, they actually also have their menu online. Basically, they call it Encyclopedia of Rice Balls. If you get overwhelmed, please check their website out. I'll link it down below. Currently in line now. It's not too bad, as I've seen it on YouTube videos. It's probably made by. 20 to 30 minute wait, which is not too bad. Usually it gets busy, but... It goes all the way on the corner here. So one of the store staff like, just came out and offered a bunch of people that's standing up in line some cold tea. I guess it's nice for like warmer, hotter days where right now it's not too bad. It's kind of like overcast, but it's still quite humid in Japan. So but it's nice of them to bring out some cold green tea. It's green tea. Mm. Yeah. So if you don't know how to read all these Japanese menus up top, you can ask them for an English menu. Looks like they will give you an English menu as well. Can you please tell me what's onigiri? Mm -hmm. so onigiri is like usually traditional Japanese rice and usually they add a little bit of salt on it and wrapped with seaweed, freshly roasted seaweed. Um, the usual topping that comes with are? In Japan, probably the most standard would be like pickled plum. Next would be like shake, which is like salmon. service but yeah they have this down to science where everyone's super efficient about doing their own steps so each person will be like basically prepping their rice another person preps the toppings and then mm -hmm. one guy up here just puts everything together basically I would say a majority of the shop that takes preparation in the morning you can see all the ingredients here in the front and then 
This is a crap ton of rice. So I got pork kimchi and uh, karage mayo. Karage mayo first. Mm. Oh my god. This is so different than the uh, onigiri that I eat in a convenience store. Mm. Amazing. The karage is seasoned perfectly and it goes so well with the mayo. And the rice is cooked in perfection. Oh my god. And it's huge. It's bigger than usual onigiri. There's so much toppings inside. I don't think I can eat kumbini onigiri anymore. <laughs> I ended up getting the same except for one, one small difference which is the shake or the salmon. This one's kage. I think kage uh, mayo. Next one is pork kimchi. Mm. I'm crying because it's so good. <laughs> I want to savor it, but I want to keep eating at the same time. Look at the filling. They don't skimp out in the filling. I just took my last bite and I'm sad now. It's gone. <laughs> um, well. So anyway, we weren't able to record that much inside. Yeah, the onigiri here just hit different. Let me put it that way. The rice is like, I don't know, made or seasoned differently. The seaweed is also like freshly roasted and they like sprinkle on some type of special salt like this, the size and the portions for both of us combined I got a three onigiri set plus miso soup and then Hina got two onigiri set plus miso soup combined for the both of us is like $18 Canadian roughly so it ends up being super value out of it the cost performance ratio is great <laughs> if you want to get your uh, stomach full ingredients they choose it's just so good I still feel like I'm dreaming <laughs> I don't think I can look at onigiri, uh, konbini, convenience store onigiri the same way. We used to really like konbini onigiri, but now that we've been spoiled by onigiri bongo, we've <laughs> went to onigiri heaven. But it's a must visit um, if you ever come to Japan. Mm. But I would suggest because this place is quite popular, even, even amongst locals, um, that you should probably try to get here just before opening. We got here basically like maybe a minute or two or three minutes, four minutes after opening and there was already about like a full inside seating waiting and but then the wait time is not that bad i would say depends how busy they are but uh we waited for at least 40 minutes and yeah it just went by too fast it was too good it was so good got off the train station at Nakameguro and we are going to be walking down the main street for about 10 minutes here and we're about to go have some nice coffee at the Roastery Reserve which is the biggest roastery Starbucks roastery res reserve here in Tokyo yeah so we are now here at the Nakameguro Starbucks Reserve Roastery. It's about 1,200 square meters. I think it's one of the biggest in the world. I think it is the biggest Starbucks Reserve Roastery in the world right now. Next to like Seattle, I know has one. Shanghai, Milan, and even bigger than the New York one. It's got three floors. First floor is like the main roastery area. You can see it's like really Wonka style where there's pipes and tubes and copper and uh, a lot of natural wood uh, everywhere for the architecture for the building. Second floor is the Tivana floor apparently. And the third floor is called Ariz, Ariv, Arivio? Ariviamo or something. But anyway, third floor is where you can get like cold brew um, cocktails as well, and like coffee-based cocktails. I guess it also becomes like a bar at nighttime as well. 
Yeah. And then this is, uh, you can also find most of the merchandise here, like cups, mugs, tumblers. Literally a split. They even have some reserved roastery chocolate too. See if you look at the piping above, it's like basically all the beans are being transferred over to the silos uh, to be roasted, I guess. That's pretty cool. So it looks like they're grabbing massive bags of beans. And if you look over there, it can depend. Sometimes they're uh, decapping from Costa Rica, some from Papua New Guinea, from Rwanda. Finally ordered, and I got a affogato, and then I also got tiramisu. Look at this slice; it's so big. And then Alex got croissant. Seasonal caramel reserve roastery drink. I don't know. We're done grabbing some pastries and drinking coffee. We're gonna go up to the second and third floor to check out the Tivana floor. There's also a cocktail bar, and I think on the top of the building there might be a terrace. Not sure. Let's go check it out. workout after uh, eating too much tiramisu and dessert yeah we're going all straight uphill <laughs> and that just about wraps it up for today we had a chance to go to eat onigiri bongo eat some yummy handmade onigiri had a chance to check out starbucks reserve roastery starbucks reserve roastery um it's a very cool place you can see a lot of like you, you can see how they process and roast beans um, and also, there's some other cool um, menu that you don't see regularly in a regular Starbucks. So, yeah. Anyway, that was a little day trip for today. So, for now, we're probably going to go to Shibuya. Well, we're in Shibuya now. And maybe play some UFO catcher. Maybe do a little bit of window shopping. Yeah. So, again, if you guys like our video, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. For any rec recommendations or what you like to do, I know a lot of you, a lot of you guys recommend a lot of stuff. 
So we're just gonna slowly putting it in our list and do one at a time. Anyway, that's all for us today. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.